opportunity to thank you, the growers, industry partners, for the funding that we received through the American Sugarcane League. That funding is what lets us uh, do our job. My name is Colin Skimbeng, a breeder here at the uh, Sugar Research Station, and to my left is uh, Michael Pontiff, the assistant breeder. And I also want to acknowledge my colleague from the USDA, Dr. Todd James. Um, I'm not going to talk much today because we don't have any new varieties, but uh, that's the nature of the breeding program. There's an ebb and flow, depending on the variability that we create, then we, we select and we get what we get out. So it's not every year that we have a new variety, but in the last couple of years, we've put out uh, some very good varieties out there, and um, I'm sure uh, most of you have them on your farm, and uh, I urge you to try it out get it on your farm and prepare for the day that 299 is going to meet its demise like any other variety, sugarcane variety in the industry. So it's better to be prepared. In terms of um, the things that we're doing new, uh, the industry um, has shifted north and we've already um, begun the process of uh, uh, recalibrating our breeding program where we've sampled some different locations that were not sampled before in order to capture that shift in the industry. Um, most of you have heard now of uh, AI, artificial intelligence. Through funding from the league and from some industry partners, we are positioning ourselves to start using drones for selection. Um, in sugarcane, the early part of the breeding program is fraught with a lot of uh, errors, human errors. So uh, the drone technology that we are embarking on is going to help us uh, be more efficient in our selection program. Um, in terms of uh, our cold tolerance, we already uh, started some research to um, uh, breed parents that we're going to make crosses for cold tolerance. That's one other very important uh, aspect that we want to capture in the industry since the industry is shifting to uh, more, more uh, cold environments. Um, I'll, I'll stop there and uh, hand over the mic to uh, Michael Pondy to talk to you about the varieties that we currently have in the program. Thank you. All right, thank you, Collins. Uh, Mavis is here. She's got this handout that I'm going to talk about here in a few minutes. Mavis works in the sucrose lab in the front office and prints everything and does everything every time I call her, so she's on top of it. Uh, so Collins said we don't have any new varieties. So first question is, why is there not a new variety? <laughs> well, the last eight years, no, the last five years, we've released eight varieties. So this sheet, when you see it, you'll have 11 varieties on here. So I was thinking, we can't fit anymore, so we didn't want to release one this year. No, not true. So what happened? So the, the varieties that would have been released this year would have been the 16 series, okay? So I can I know that 16601 and 16, 16600 and 16608 made it to the outfield. 600 was a big old stalk, like a three pound stalk. When you have a big old stalk, you don't have a lot of population. Uh, and then 608, I think, had mosaic, some smut, some leaf skull. So we meet in these meetings at the league office, which is coming up here in August, and we look at all the varieties. This year, we will look at the starting with 17738. 17738 will be possibly released next year. It's down here on the end. I didn't want to stand down there in the sun. I thought it was better to stand in the shade right here. So we dropped 16600 and 16608 because they weren't up to par with the varieties you see behind them. The mission statement for this LSU Ag Center sugar cane breeding station is to improve upon existing commercial varieties in the Louisiana sugar industry. If we have a variety that comes all the way through the program of 12 years and makes it to year 10, 11, 12, we hate to do it, but we have to drop it because it's not as good as 299 silver. It doesn't have as high sugar as 739. It has a fault. It has too many diseases, smut, rust, leaf skull, mosaic we've been seeing a little bit this year. So that is the reason that one of the 16 series didn't make it all the way to the 12th year and be released. Now I can tell you that 17738 up till now, and in a minute we'll look on the sheet. The data's looking pretty good. We've been walking our off-station tests. It's in the outfield this year. It's gonna be in second stubble. So we're gonna go to these second stubble tests and we're going to harvest 17, 738. Samples go back to the mill. We meet, we're going to meet this August to make sure we're going to continue on with it. After we get it, this is really a telltale year. Is 738 
good enough to be out there with 299, 885, 306, 267. Is it good enough to be out there with the group of varieties we have on the sheet? And so far, it's looking pretty good. But the reason, like I said, is these varieties make it to the 10th, 11th, 12th year. If they don't, not acceptable, and they're not beating one of these varieties out there that we have out there, then there's no reason to release them. You know, we're improving varieties. We're not status quo. It took a long time between 384 to be the monster it was to get to 299. Now, 299 is 50-60% of the acreage. So we've been having kind of a hot, dry year so far, a lot of smut in 299. You got to be careful. You got to watch 299. It's out there a lot. 384, if y'all remember, and I see some older farmers here, 384 was a beast. It got rust quickly. It went down. We said, oh, no, what are we going to do? You don't, want to get, you don't want to get in the same situation with 299 when you have fields of smut and you're like, why is you know, reducing the yield potential of 299? Dr. Oil always said you got to have that clean seed program, roll your smut out, you know, watch a clean seed, which is true with all the varieties. You have to take care of all of them. So last year we released 508 and L15306. Those are new, looking pretty good in the outfield data so far. Uh, and then before that, uh, 14267 and 14885. And 885 is a monster. But 885 was great coming through, and there's one thing we always notice on. 885 is going to go down if you get a big wind. It's so thick on the road, it lays down like a blanket, and it lays down all the rest of the cane of 885 on there. We got a storm on Sunday afternoon. We had everything clean and nice. It rained three, a little over three inches. The wind blew, came from that way laid all these down. They're all standing back up. 885 was laying down. 508 was laying down a little bit. And then you can say, well, why do you why do you have varieties that go down? Because everything is acceptable or above 299 going through the program, so you got to release something like that that's so great. All varieties have pros and cons. So we're in the process right now. It's, it's July 20th, 19th. What we're doing right now is a breeding team, the USDA team, American Sugar Cane League is we're out there, we're at all these locations. Uh, I gave a talk in Point Coupe uh, a couple weeks back, and I went through the program and the numbers, and I see some faces here. So just bear with me for one minute while I kind of tell some, tell you, you know, why and where these numbers come from. Because we're always spouting out numbers, and people are saying, what, what, you know, what did, where did 17, 738 come from? All right, so the year it was assigned is the year set 2017. Before that, five years before that, it was crossed. All right, so you're gonna go on this tour. You're gonna to pass the chemical shed on the right, and on the left, you're gonna pass the photo period house. And people say, well, what is this big tall house for? It's to induce sugarcane to flower. It does not flower naturally. It will in Florida, it won't here. Without flowers, we can't have new varieties. The next house you're gonna see is the crossing house. After it flowers, well, you're gonna see the parents on the carts. And you say, what is this? all this cane on these cars. Those are parents. Now I can tell you, you say, well, how do you know what parents to use? If we have a high, high stubbler, if we have a high, high TRS that doesn't make it all the way. I know right now, for example, in the program, we have an L2065. All the way up till now, the TRS has been over 300. It is the highest, one of the highest sugar ones I've ever seen in 16 years that I've been here. But it's got a little bit bigger stalk and it's not a good stubbler. So what do you do with something like that? You use it on the crossing cart to try to get that high TRS into another one or crossing with a, like a stubble like 299. You take the stubble in a 299, this one I'm talking about, 2065, you cross them and you hope for the best. So after we cross them, we grow out these seedlings in the greenhouse. And I know you've probably heard me say it many times over the years, we grow 80 to 90,000 little seedlings. We still do that. That whole house on the left, when you pass it, it's marked. We have those, we take those in April so next April, we cross this fall, we take those in April, we plant 80,000 seedlings in the greenhouse, in April we plant them in the field. All right, that's the first step of 12 years. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump ahead to the fifth year of assignment. So let's say 2017, five years before that, it was crossed. It was assigned in 2017. So going back to the 2016 series, all right, we have none left. I looked in the book this morning, we, we made 38 2016 assignments. So there was 38 varieties that were good enough to go to this station here to be replanted in a two replicated test, Iberia Station in Generet, and down in Ardon at Ardon Farm, USDA. 
So 38 varieties went to the first step away from the station. After the year after that, they go to three off-station nurseries. Now we have a name for everything. That's how you got to keep things straight. Somebody the other day asked me, it was a younger kid, said, why can't you just call it a name? Just call it this or call it that. There's too many and there's too many numbers. How do the numbers work? The LSU varieties, when they're assigned, we go from one to 499. If you ever wondered why you never see an L15600 or something like that, we stop at 499. USDA starts numbering at 500 to 999. I don't, know if, I don't know if I've ever said that or told people, but that's where we get our numbers from. So we make those assignments. This year we will assign the 2023s. So we will leave off with, I think we left off with 102. So our first assignment will be L2023-103. Uh, and we'll have those and they'll move off the station to the on-station nurseries. So I said that we made 38 assignments in 2016 and we took them to three places. The next year, we go back out, we cut them, we walk them, we talk about them, we meet, we drop. I think that year, of those 38, we had to drop 28, just that one year long. So the numbers drop quickly because the test is bigger and there's more scrutiny on those numbers. We're cutting 10 stalks and you're gonna pass the sucrose lab, bring them to the sucrose lab, run them through the lab, and then we're getting them from all the locations. Every year, we do every step, okay? Every single year. So I say the 2016 series, Next year will be the 2017 series. There, right now, I know in 20, the 2018s, you'll see in the plant cane, 803 and 878. So we're walking out there, we're looking at 803, we're looking at 878, we're looking at the data, we're looking at our observations. We meet in a room with the league with some very long tenured sugarcane people who are very wise, uh, and we decide. Now, sometimes we argue about what should stay and what should go. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. That just shows that we're passionate about what we're giving out there to be a commercial variety. And after you're looking at something for 10, 11, 12 years, you kind of really start to like it and you don't want to drop it. Because once you drop it, like I said, it's gone and maybe it might be used on the carts. So we tend to really, you know, cherish these varieties and we help them along. Of course, here at the Sugar Cane Station, on this side of the road, right next to the river, you can pretty much grow anything in that soft plant. That's ice cream soil, we say. So what we do is after uh, the third year we move them across the road to the heavy soil and then we move them to away from the station sites Iberia is a heavy soil site okay along highway 90 we have outfield locations that are heavy soil that all the locations all the numbers so at this point 17 738 I think we have over a hundred times that we've gone out there harvested brought it back and see what the numbers are and it's looking good so now I'm going to direct you to the sheet and if you look on the data side so right now, L01299, 50, 60% of the acreage, we're comparing everything to L01299. If you look in the plant cane crop, the top table, so that is nine locations in the outfield. Outfield typically has half the sites are light, half the sites are heavy. If you see 299 there at the top, 33.2 tons, uh, 266 sugar per ton. So scan your eyes down, you see 17, 738. You see it has 89.57 sugar per acre, 32 tons, like, like 299, 278, a little sweeter than 299, and a 2.3 pound stalk, all right? So there's your 738 and the plant cane. Look in the next table. You got first double crop at 10 locations. You see 738 again. You see it compared to 299, 95.03 sugar per acre. Look at 730, 738 is 92.40, 33 tons of 275 TRS. All right. The thing with these tables is, is as you look into the second stubble and the third stubble, it's hard to beat 299 because it's such a great stubble. It really kicks it into gear after the plant cane crop. So if you look at the second stubble crop at nine locations, and now you're going to see 299 at the top. You can see the ones we release. You see 508, 306, 267. You look across and you see those TRS with the plus beside it and the stock weight with the plus beside it, then you look all the way in the population and you see those minuses. Why? Look at 299, 39,511 stalks in second stubble. So 299 is really, it turns it on and it kicks these other varieties in the butt, on, and especially in third stubble. It's amazing that 299, if you look in the third stubble crop, at, this is just three locations. Sometimes we have problems at some of the locations, it gets plowed out or it gets the test is, you know, we can't get them all every time. We're very thankful that the farmers let us use a little bit of their field. So 
when they're ready to cut it, we got to go run and get it right away or we lose it. So that's why you don't always see 10, 10 locations at every spot. But if you look at that 299, 33.2 tons, it has the same tonnage in third stove as it does in plant. That's, a, that's amazing. 299 is you know, still doing great out there. That's why it's tough to beat it. That's why we don't have a 16 series because the 16s couldn't stubble like, the ones that made it to the end couldn't stubble like 299. But we're gonna, every year we do everything. So we're gonna keep looking, we're gonna keep crossing with the highest ones. And we're, you know, eventually, nobody ever thought we would do better than 384 and then have 299. Nobody thinks that something's gonna stubble better than 299. There will be. I may not be still working here because it might be another five or six years, but it's gonna come. Like I said, we make these crosses and it's 12 years later. So we're looking at material for 12 years. So, you know, who knows what's gonna happen in 12 more years. But if you flip that uh, sheet to the other side, you see the characteristics and you see the level of varieties beginning with 540 all the way to the last year's 15306 and 15508. I don't need to go through every, you know, characteristic. That's why we give you the sheet. But uh, I can, you know, like I said, 508 has a little tendency to go down. Uh, the data is looking, you know, pretty good on 885, 306, 508. Of course, you got to watch. If you look in the bore column, the last three we released are a little susceptible bore. So you, you know, you want to watch where you put them if you need to spray them. Keys like that. Uh, cold tolerance, really, the the best one out there now for cold tolerance is still 540. Really, um, last year we got four night freeze here uh, at Christmas, and what that does is I told you we planted. 80,000 seedlings. So we go back this year from that plant cane, there might only be 40,000 seedlings to choose from. The cold is the first determining factor that takes out a lot of these varieties. But I'll let you, uh, you know, have this sheet look at it. I'll say that, uh, you know, there's a good list of varieties on here. And I would say try them, you know, plant what works for you. Uh, we go to a lot of places north to Bunky, Cheneyville, out west. Uh, to ERAF, we go down south, Raceland, and this, this area, different ones look better in different places. Uh, we make all those observations. So I've been places where a former hates whatever. He hates 283 because of off time. So I've been to another place that loves 283. So what I say is plant them all. We don't want to get in a spot where we have 384 on 91% of the acreage like we did at 299. 50 to 60% of the acreage is probably about right. Uh, have a little bit of all of them. Uh, you know, use these sheets, use the information that's handed out by the Ag Center and the USDA and the League. And I'm going to turn it over to Dr. James Todd, and he's going to tell you a little bit about the USDA. Oh, my name is Dr. James Todd. I'm with the USDA Sugar Cane Research Unit down in Holman. This is our 100th year anniversary, so um, yeah, we've been there for 100 years, and I've only been there for a small part of it, but I've been honored to do that. We work very closely with the with the LSU Ag Center and development of varieties, and we also um, continue to work on our, our varieties, uh, the HO and HOCP varieties there in home as well, which are we could concurrently evaluate with them. And as um, Michael said, we, we do not have, we don't have any new varieties released for you this year, but that no, that is not a waste because despite that those varieties aren't aren't ready for the for y'all to evaluate in your fields. We put them back on the carts, and sometimes they're excellent parents for the next generation that, that will help advance the sugar cane in the future. So those things, all this evaluation doesn't go to waste. It's used for continued evaluation, continued use of recycled parents, continued um, and new development of new varieties for y'all. So in the future, we'll um, continue to push forward and create new uh, varieties for you and push higher sugar and higher tonnage for y'all in the future and better profits hopefully. But we, we continue to work for you. Um, it's a long cycle. It's a it's a marathon, not a sprint, but we continue to, to improve the sugar cane varieties for y'all. And uh, thanks for um, continued work. And uh, all I have to say. Uh, if we, I think we got one or two minutes before we call the wagons. If there's any questions you can ask now or you can catch one of us later. Uh, and ask us about the data after you look at it like that. If not, uh, we'll call in the wagons and you can start the tour. Yeah. Good. All right. Thank you all. Sugar cane, sweet sugar cane.